Now we'll talk about calorimetry. And you can tell what this word means just by looking at it. Calorie here related to heat and metry like metric related to measurement. So we're just talking about measuring heat and specifically calorimetry is the measuring of the heat or the heat flow involved in some chemical or physical change. And in this case we're going to talk about a hot object. I'll draw it here in red. A hot object placed next to a cold object. And so they're touching each other. So the edge of the hot object is there and the cold object is there. If you place a hot object next to a cold object, heat will always flow from the hot object to the cold object. Heat always flows from hot to cold. And this is because heat on the molecular level is really just the vibration of atoms. So if you remember that this is made of a bunch of little atoms, I'll just draw a representative sample there. And if you picture all of these atoms, and remember this is a solid, so these atoms are in a crystal lattice structure fixed in place roughly relative to each other, but they're all vibrating back and forth. So if you picture these atoms shaking, any one atom is shaking back and forth, the atoms strike the atoms of the cold object over here. And each little molecular impact transfers some kinetic energy from the hot object to the cold object. In other words, the shaking of the atoms right here at the boundary. The hot atoms are shaking more and when they strike the cold atoms they cause them to shake more. So heat is transferred and that transfer propagates on through the cold object as these atoms over here on the section of the cold object that's in contact with the hot, as they start to shake more, they shake the atoms next to them, and those atoms bang into and shake the atoms next to them. And the rate at which the heat flows into this material and flows through this material depends on the thermal conductivity of that material. The point here is, is that the heat flows from hot to cold, and the means by which it flows is the atoms hitting each other. Now with that in mind, here's an important point about conservation of energy. Suppose that this is our system, this hot object and the cold object, and by the system we mean that those are the things we're considering, and we're not considering any outside influences. So if the system is insulated, so imagine this is wrapped up in some material, and we're going to assume that it's perfectly insulated, so that no heat from the outside leaks into the system, and no heat from the inside leaks out. The only heat transfer that's taking place is from the hot object to the cold object. In this case the law of conservation of energy applies, well the law of conservation of energy always applies, but it applies in this way. The heat lost by the hot object equals the heat gained by the cold object and conceptually that's very important to understand. The heat lost by the hot object equals the heat gained by the cold object. And if you understand conservation of energy, that should make sense. No heat is created, no energy is created or destroyed. So when the heat leaves the hot object, it's not leaving the universe, it's not disappearing. It's going from the hot object to the cold object. And when heat goes into this object, it's not new heat that's appearing. All the heat that's going into this object came from the hot object. So all the heat lost by the hot object has to exactly equal the heat gained by the cold object. 